Despite a slew of concerning news stories about the struggles of the service in the last few months, the Royal Navy is currently maintaining a high tempo of ships at sea on operations. At the end of October, the Royal Navy took its naval aviation capabilities to the next level by launching a fully loaded F-35B from HMS Prince of Wales, an aircraft carrier, for the first time. HMS Prince of Wales entered service in 2019, two years after HMS Queen Elizabeth. They can each carry up to 36 F-35Bs and a number of Merlin helicopters. The two conventionally powered vessels each displace 65,000 tons and are the biggest warships ever built by the Royal Navy. By comparison, the US Navy's Nimitz class and newer Gerald R. Ford class nuclear-powered carriers each displace 100,000 tons. HMS Prince of Wales was meant to sail to the US in the summer of last year, but was sidelined by an extremely unusual fault in one of its propeller shafts, which forced it to enter a dry dock for several months of repairs. Prince of Wales has now followed HMS Queen Elizabeth to the US, and it's a welcome arrival. At the end of October, the Royal Navy took its naval aviation capabilities to the next level by launching a fully loaded F-35B from HMS Prince of Wales, an aircraft carrier, for the first time. The F-35B took off in beast mode, a configuration in which its internal weapons bays and external pylons are all fully loaded with missiles or bombs. Beast mode sacrifices an F-35 stealth for increased firepower, as externally mounted munitions increase the aircraft's radar signature. During the test, a specially modified F-35B carried 22,000 pounds of inert bombs. Its maximum capacity. The F-35B is the short takeoff and vertical landing variant of the jet and the most mechanically complex of the F-35 family. The B variant is designed to operate from shorter runways, such as those aboard US amphibious ships and the UK's aircraft carriers. While F-35Bs have been taking off from the 350-foot mark on HMS Prince of Wales flight deck, a fully laden F-35B, depending on the conditions, may have to take off from as far back as the 850-foot mark, almost at the end of the carrier's 920-foot flight deck. This wasn't the only aviation breakthrough that took place aboard the British aircraft carrier during Westland 2023, its current deployment off the east coast of the US. In September, as the carrier left the UK, it participated in a first-of-its-kind naval drone test to demonstrate the ability of unmanned aircraft to carry cargo to the ship, freeing its helicopters of that mission. The F-35Bs, flown from a US base by US Marine Corps pilots, joined the carrier in mid-October, ahead of the beast mode tests. Those tests were also the first time an aircraft launched by HMS Prince of Wales had dropped bombs, albeit inert ones. Perhaps the most important tests involved shipborne rolling vertical landings. SRVL is a recent British innovation. The first one was performed in 2018 aboard HMS Queen Elizabeth, Prince of Wales' sister ship and the lead ship of the class. During an SRVL, the jet uses both the vertical thrust from its engine and the lift from its wings. The benefits are that an SRVL doesn't require a resting gear, as carrier landings normally do, and it reduces wear on a jet's lift engines, more importantly. An SRVL allows a jet to land with more weight than it can carry during a vertical landing, meaning F-35B pilots shouldn't have to ditch excess fuel tanks and expensive munitions to land safely on the carrier. The Prince of Wales and the Queen Elizabeth have no arresting gear, so jets can only land vertically or by performing an SRVL, making mastery of the technique crucial for the ship and its crew. During the tests, the carrier conducted a total of 60 rolling landings, including 10 at night. The F-35Bs were modified to carry testing sensors and were flown by U.S. Marine pilots from a test and evaluation squadron assigned to Naval Air Station Patterson River in Maryland. A 200-strong team from Pax River's F-35 Integrated Test Force also deployed on board HMS Prince of Wales to support the tests. Westland 2023 is only the latest round of trials for the jet and the carriers. This deployment focused on expanding the capabilities of both of Britain's new carriers, especially their ability to launch and recover F-35s faster, in worse weather, and at day or night. 
US and British experts are now set to analyze the data gathered during the tests. But the ship's command team are confident the trials have expanded the envelope of F-35 operations. It was impressive, launching the jet, all bombed up from the back of the flight deck, said Warrant Officer 1 John Etherington, the captain of the flight deck aboard HMS Prince of Wales. It's exciting to see us pushing the boundaries of UK naval aviation. The last four weeks at sea have been the busiest HMS Prince of Wales has ever seen. The test points achieved will not only improve UK F-35B operations, but those of our F-35B program partners and allies as well. Despite a slew of concerning news stories about the struggles of the service in the last few months, the Royal Navy is currently maintaining a high tempo of ships at sea on operations. There have been continued calls for the UK CSG to be sent to the Eastern Mediterranean, but this option has not been taken for several good reasons. Although the media is currently fixated on events in Israel, the threat from Russia and the war in Ukraine remains of greatest consequence to the UK and Europe. Although nowhere near matching the firepower of US equivalents, retaining the UK CSG at high readiness in the European theatre makes sense. The US has the big stick in the form of the Gerald R. Ford CSG in the Eastern Med and UK jets could also potentially operate from Cyprus. If they were required to supplement US forces in combat operations of some kind. The prime purpose of Allied naval forces in the region is not so much to aid Israel, but to ensure the conflict does not spread further and engulf the Middle East. Deterring Iran and its proxies from intervention is the priority and it should be noted that the decisive deployment of US carriers has been effective. The deterrent sitting not far off the coast must be a major factor in their calculations.